So today we are going to discuss about the paranasal sinuses. So first of all you should know what are sinuses. So sinuses are air filled cavities present in bone. So the paranasal sinuses are sinuses that are present in and around the nasal cavity. So basically they develop as a mucosal diverticulum of the main nasal cavity invading the adjacent bones. And since they are part and parcel of the nasal cavity, they must be lined by pseudostratified ciliated columnar epitheliums. So these sinuses exhibit two types of growth spurts. Firstly, around the 7 to 8 years, that is during the time when the permanent teeth erupts. And secondly, at puberty. So you must be wondering what are the functions of these sinuses. So let me tell you, firstly they make the skull lighter, since they are air filled cavities, they are not solid structure, so they will make the skull lighter. Secondly they add resonance to the voice and thirdly they act as air conditioning chamber and they add humidity and also brings the temperature of the inspired air into a favorable one. Now let's study about each and every sinuses in details. So first of all you should remember that only two things are important regarding the sinuses that is where they are located and how they are related with the bones and the soft tissues secondly at which part of the nasal cavity they opens the frontal sinus is two in number and they are triangular in shape and they lie between the inner and outer tables of the frontal bone you can see this is the frontal sinus it's a gap present in the frontal bone and these are also known as the tables of the frontal bone so they lie between the two tables of the frontal bone and the right is slightly larger than the left and they are usually separated by a septum. Now let's see its relations. The anterior wall is related with the superciliary arch of the forehead. The posterior wall is related with the meninges and frontal lobe of the brain. You can easily understand this thing is the cavity of the skull and the inferior wall is related to the roof of the orbit and roof of the nose. Since it is triangular in shape, it will not have a superior wall. This is the inferior wall, this is the anterior wall and this is the posterior wall. Now just see this diagram. The skull cap has been removed and you can clearly appreciate the frontal sinus is over here. The anterior wall and the posterior wall. In this image you can see that the skull has been illuminated from behind and you can clearly see the frontal sinuses the area which are lightly shaded over here so these are the frontal sinuses later we will see an MRI and the radiograph of these sinuses together now let's see about the ethmoidal sinuses so the ethmoidal sinuses are present within the labyrinth of ethmoidal bone and located between the upper part of the lateral nasal wall and the orbit See, this is the upper part of the lateral nasal wall and this is the orbit. So the ethmoidal sinuses are located over here in this region. They are present in three groups. They are not paired but they are present in three groups. The anterior, middle and the posterior ethmoidal sinuses. In this radiograph, you can see the different sinuses present. This is an occipital frontal view of the skull or rather you can say this is a posterior anterior view of the skull in radiograph we define them like this PA or AP antero posterior so you can see these are the ethmoidal sinuses marked as three and this is the frontal sinus in the radiograph these are darkly shade and the solid bones are lightly shade you can see now let's see the sphenoidal sinuses so they are two in number and they are also paired. The image that you are seeing is of sphenoid bone. These are the wings and this is the body. And you can see there are two openings over here. These are the openings of the sphenoidal sinuses. We are seeing this view from behind. This is a posterior view of the sphenoid bone. So these are the sphenoidal sinuses. Let's see some better images. So this is a sagittal section of a skull and you can see this is the sphenoid bone and you can see over here there is a cavity this is the sphenoidal sinus now let's see the relations of the sphenoidal sinus above it is related to the pituitary gland and optic chiasma below it is related 
to the roof of the nasopharynx laterally it is related to the cavernous sinus and internal carotid artery and in front we have the spinoethmoidal recess over here that opens in the nasal cavity now let's see the maxillary sinus the maxillary sinus is the largest of all and it is pyramidal in shape and the image that you're seeing right now is of maxilla and you can see there is a cavity over here this is the maxillary sinus this is a coronal image of the face and you can see this is the maxillary sinus and these are the ethmoidal air cells you can see the maxillary sinus is the largest of all now let's see the relations of the maxillary sinus the roof is formed by the floor of orbit you can see and the floor is formed by the alveolar process of maxilla this one the base is formed by the lateral wall of nose and the apex extend up to the zygomatic process the apex lies over here the anterior wall is formed by the anterior surface of the body of maxilla and the posterior wall is formed by the infratemporal surface of maxilla so these were the relations of all the sinuses now we are going to see about the drainage of various sinuses in the nasal cavity the frontal sinus drains into the middle meatus of the hiatus semi the frontal sinus drains in the anterior part of the hiatus semilunaris this is the hiatus semilunaris of the middle meatus this entire region is the middle meatus and it drains through the fronto nasal duct you can clearly see over here as i said earlier the ethmoidal sinus is present in three groups and they also drain in different parts of the nasal cavity now let's see each of them the anterior group drains in the hiatus semilunaris you can see this is the anterior ethmoidal sinus and it drains in the hiatus semilunaris and the middle uh, group drain into the bulba ethmoidalis you can see these are the openings of middle ethmoidal sinuses and the anterior and the middle drain in the middle meatus the posterior group they drain in the superior meatus these are the posterior group of the ethmoidal sinuses and they drain in the superior meatus the sphenoidal sinus you can see this is a sphenoidal sinus and it drains into the spenoethmoidal recess of the posterior part of the nasal cavity you can see and the maxillary sinus being the largest one drains in the posterior part of the hiatus semilunaris of the middle meatus you can see this is the opening of maxillary sinus so all these sinuses opens basically in the middle meatus and in the superior meatus this is a coronal section of the skull bones and you can see how the sinuses are related to each other the orbit this is the orbit is forming a landmark for distinguishing different sinuses you can see above the orbit or superior to the orbit we have the frontal sinuses inferior to the orbit we have the maxillary sinus and just medial to the orbit we have the ethmoidal sinus and posterior to the orbit that is behind this orbit we have the sphenoidal sinuses this is the nasal cavity and this is the palate so thanks for watching i hope you like the video and stay connected with us if you have any queries you can mention them in the comment section